Welcome back guys, it's Dr. Somji. And Dr. Solomon. Today we're going to be talking about the five ways to have a non-surgical facelift. Okay. Why don't we start by talking about what exactly does a surgical facelift do and how we're going to try and replicate that non-surgically. So a surgical facelift operates on all layers of the skin and deeper than the skin as well. So if we simplify it, you've got the skin layer which sits at the top, which can get a little bit lax. A surgical facelift involves removing portion of that skin. Then you've got the fat layer. So your fat pads descend with age, so they come down as you can see in this uh, image. And a facelift will re reposition those fat pads. Then you've also got the deeper layer than that fat, which is the muscle layer, which gets also looser. So as we get older, our muscles are not as well-defined, they're not as bulky, and that all contributes to things coming down. So those are the th sort of three main layers that you want to target, but you can do this with non-surgical means as well. So it's not only surgery, you might not be ready to have scars, you might not be ready to have downtime, you also might not be ready to have essentially the expense as, as well, because yeah. um, a true, what we call a deep plane facelift, which works on all of those layers, can be upwards of 20,000 US, even up to like 100,000 US to even 200,000 US as well. So you might not have the funds for that and you might not even want that extreme result because everyone gets scared about that. Yeah, well. people get scared of going under the knife. People yeah. get scared of going under general anesthetic and also the, the results, the scar tissue that's left behind potentially can restrict further treatment. Yeah. Uh, we know that. So as you correctly um, mentioned and described, you we have a sort of lax layer underneath and a lax layer on top. So I analogy I use going back to the sort of expedition days is you know you've got the strings of the tent uh, which right. have become a bit lax with your muscle layers and you've got the canvas of the tent which is sort of bunched up together and what we're trying to do is pull that canvas tight and, and then hook it down or tighten those uh, the guide wires yeah. of the tent so everything is tighter, firmer and in the case of the phase lifted uh, and that's what we're trying to replicate non-surgically um, whilst non-surgically may not replicate a full surgical facelift we can get pretty close to that. Well technology in the last even year and a half alone, it has really improved for us to be able to target all of those different layers. And this is the reason why we did the video, because you deserve to know the latest treatments that are non-surgical that can lift the face. Okay. So we want to target the deepest layer, so that muscle layer within the, within the face. How can you target that? So we have the M-Face device. Tell me about the M-Face. Well, M-Face is completely brand new. It's one of a, it's a revolutionary treatment. It's made by the same company that do M-Sculpt Neo. So you, they use a technology called HIFEM, so electro muscle and magnetic stimulation that essentially contracts those muscle layers. So normally when you go to the gym, you can only contract your bicep muscle or any other muscles to maximum probably about 30% of its capacity. But with this technology, you can contract it to 100%. And what it does, it contracts it numerous times. So if you're looking at the tummy, you can do like tens of thousands of sit-ups, the equivalent of tens of thousands of sit-ups in a 30-minute session. And it also shakes out the lactic acid. So we even get athletes coming there. So people that are like Olympic athletes that want to come for the treatment because they can actually surpass what they can do in the gym. Legally as well. And legally, yeah. So <laughs> I'm not going to reveal some of the names, but look, at the end of the day, you've probably seen some great treatments looking at stimulating the muscles of the face. You see me on TV doing facial yoga treatments, which helps stimulate the muscle. But again, you can't use, you can't exercise those lifting muscles as much as you can, as you want to, because it's just manual method. So the M face was born and that was there to contract those lifting muscles of the face to also give you more muscle bulk as well. So you'll look tighter, firmer, and a little bit more plumper as well. Okay. So you can get some great results from M-Face. The other thing that they do, they have radio frequency in it, which also tightens skin and firms at the same time. So say if you just wanted that deeper lift and a little bit of improvement within the skin, then the M-Face is fantastic. You can also do it across the whole face. So you can get a brow lift at the same time as well, and you can also get an improvement within the neck. So it's a great new treatment with a very good technology behind it that's been used for years. So it's extremely safe. And you know, it's marketed as for patients that don't necessarily want Botox and fillers and also don't want surgical things. So the M-Face is a great treatment. Okay, so that works on the muscle layer. Let's move a layer up and we're going into the fat layer now. So we're going into that fat layer. So there's a number of things that can stimulate the fat. 
The Morpheus 8 is fantastic for that. So radio frequency microneedling, we've done a separate video on this so you can learn a little bit more about it. But what it does, it just shrinks that deeper fat layer because it goes down to four millimeters in the face. You have to be super careful that you don't destroy the fat layer because you could go the other way. But this is fantastic for contracting that, uh, that fat layer. And that's similar to what you're gonna be doing during surgery because if you've got a lot of jowl fat, sometimes we liposuction the fat around, out of that area, so we yeah. take away fat, and Morpheus can contract it. Just remember, these non-surgical treatments are not gonna do the same thing as surgery, but they're there to still give you an effect, but a lot more subtle. So you have, with the Morpheus aid, you have the radio frequency, but you can also use a bit of ultrasound in that layer as well, can't you? Absolutely. So. Before, we used to have a treatment called Old Therapy, which was, has been popular for many years because Old Therapy uses ultrasound technology to target the muscle layer, the fat layer, and the skin layer. But what we found is that in certain patients, as it was going down to that sort of muscle layer, people were inadvertently destroying the fat layer. So a new treatment was born. It's called the SoftWave, which is FDA approved for brow lift, face lifting, and neck lifting. And the reason why it's so safe is that it only targets down to 1.5 millimeters. So you're really safe on that fat layer. It stimulates collagen in the skin layer. So you see this natural like plumping effect, which is similar to what you can get with very super soft, subtle fillers. And you also get a nice tightening effect too. So you're gonna target that deeper layer with the M face. You're gonna target the fat layer with things like Morpheus. Morpheus. And then you're gonna also target the zero to 1.5 millimeters of the skin with SoftWave. And that's using ultrasound, a, a very specific type of ultrasound as well. It uses something called parallel beam technology. Basically, that makes, it means that the energy is released parallel, almost like in a circle, yeah? So normally, traditional devices go like this, so perpendicular, yeah. and the energy can get spread from one millimeter to two millimeters and it loses very its effect. Easy. And it loses its effect. So before, you, if you remember those old treatments like collagen wave where people like waving it on the skin, the radio frequency energy spread, so you can't really get so much of a change. You had Casey, which stimulated the muscle, but not enough, it only twitched it. So these treatments that we're talking about are an upgrade on previous treatments. Where it's parallel, all the energy can be put in that 1.5 millimeters, exactly where you need it. Yeah, and before we move on to the upper layers of the face, I think it's worth um, emphasizing that we, whilst we mentioned certain manufacturers of these machines and technologies, the focus on the, on the actual technology itself, the focus is on what does it actually do. So, yeah, we've talked about uh, how it affects the muscle, we talked about the radio frequency affecting the fat layer, and then ultrasound parallel ultrasound affecting that layer above that. So machines change all the time. Manufacturers yeah. machines change, know, things get better. They update, they update the technology, but the technology ultimately is what the focus should be on. And um, that technology is the non-surgical replacement for the knife or for you know, the surgeon's hands. So yeah. um, every time we talk about these layers, whilst we mention a particular brand or particular manufacturer, uh, the emphasis, like I said, should be on the technology. Yeah, and so, so now you've got a patient and you've still got fine lines and wrinkles and you've got maybe pigmentation, sun damage. These are things that are the surface of your skin. So these are things that people are seeing. So even if you've had a facelift, it won't help things like fine lines, wrinkles. Yeah. Um, it might not even necessarily help that muscle layer as well. So these are things that you can combine even with a surgical facelift if you haven't got the results that you necessarily want. So what are you gonna do for like fine lines and wrinkles, particularly like for around the eyes? People will say, well, what about these wrinkles that are really close to the eye? Yeah. What is the gold standard for that? So I see this layer as the canvas of the tent. You know, you want to clean up the canvas. You want to sort of smoothen it out and you iron want to it out. iron it out. <laughs> and it could be, it could be your shirt. You, you know, you've pulled the shirt tight and you want to iron it out or in the canvas, this case, you want to pull it tight. So what I like to use initially for fine lines and wrinkles, um, yes, we have injectables. Yes, we have, you know, hydrating topicals, but um, from a non-surgical aggressive point of view, um, I like to use laser. I like to use particularly ablative laser from the very weak to the very strong, um, depending on the skin type and depending on the areas, like around the eyes, for example. So two of those lasers are like CO2 lasers and Erbium Yag. Yes. Like we tend to, in lighter skin type, to use CO2. Erbium Yag is slightly more darker skin type, reducing the risk of things like pigmentation post-procedure, so darkening post-procedure. But also, like, you can actually treat the lid. So you can even get a kind of like a non-surgical version of a surgical thing, yeah. which is called a blepharoplasty, right? Yeah, we've got some great videos on that as well. Um, so the laser is good. The laser is good at cleaning the skin, essentially ablating that layer, so smoothing, um, smoothing that skin. it out. 
Um, but that's not the end because we can then go back in once the skin is healed and take off that layer, including some pigment, and help that skin regenerate using a very strong peel that we can do as well. Yeah, so you do a lot of these chemical peels. It's guaranteed to remove most of the time in like 80 to 90% of pigmentation in patients. Yeah. So sun damage, there's spots, little areas of melasma sometimes as well that can happen in a lot of female patients. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it as we are improving the texture of the skin with the laser um, and with the peel, yes, the texture improves significantly as well. So you're, you're compounding that effect, but you're also improving the tone of the skin, texture and tone. So when you look at any surface, you don't just look at the texture, you look at the tone. So people want to know, what is the name of the treatment? So the, the, the treatment that we do for that is the Cosmolan peel. Um, yeah. And there are two strengths of Cosmolan. You have Cosmolan, you have Dimabolan, and we have a video on that talking all about so it. So fantastic results from that. Like the yeah. Cosmolan is, tends to be more aesthetic therapist based, and the Dimabolan is for more doctor use, for like more stubborn pigmentation. But that's like the final, that's like the icing on the cake to completely smooth things out have no sort of textural concerns. If people have got a lot of redness, then you man, may think about things like lasers and stuff, but for pigmentation, that's a sort of final top five treatment that you would look at. And then you're left with a tightening, lifting, smoothing effect of the skin. So there we have it. There's five ways to lift your face non-surgically. Some of them actually do what surgical facelifts can't do. So you can mix and match. You might not have problems with all of these parameters, so you might want to use all five, or you might want to just use one because a lot of these treatments can combine different layers. So this is the gold standard at the moment. We'll always release new videos. So it's really important to subscribe to the channel as well as click that alert button because as soon as new videos are available, you'll be the first to know.